We're here in the beautiful Paris and we meet interesting people like uh, Tendermint or I must say uh, the main developer of Cosmos. Cosmos was a highly anticipated uh, project, I must say. So nice to meet you, uh, Zaki. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Zaki. Uh, I, uh, I work at Tendermint. Tendermint is the company that was the principal developer of the Cosmos Hub, um, and which was a recently launched public blockchain uh, that just went live about three weeks ago. And we have been, uh, we've been working on, you know, I've been working on Cosmos for almost three years. And uh, it's been really great to see, you know, the first Cosmos chain starting to launch in the last few months. Uh, many launches coming up, uh, you know, Cosmos-based blockchains are, so Cosmos, so what is Cosmos? Uh, let's let's kind of like break down all of the pieces of what Cosmos is. Um, so Cosmos is uh, the first Byzantine fault tolerant consensus, so classical uh, 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 BFT research applied to consensus. So it's uh, based on Tendermint, which is a consensus algorithm that our company developed, Jay Kwan invented back in 2014. Um, and then we spent almost the last, we spent most of the last year sort of preparing Tendermint and attaching a proof of stake layer on top of it uh, that uh, enables, you know, thousands of delegators to participate, hundreds of validators, uh, and uh, sort of this dynamic, you know, change of the validator set that we've seen play out on mainnet. So we put all of those pieces together and we launched uh, back in March the first uh, de fully decentralized launch of a proof of stake blockchain uh, where there was no foundation or for-profit company uh, coordinating the launch. Uh, the community of fundraiser participants who participated in the Cosmos fundraiser all the way back uh, in April 2017 collectively launched the blockchain using the software. Uh, so those pieces are now out in place. And then the, the other piece that we really built is, so Cosmos is designed to be an ecosystem of sovereign but economically connected blockchains. Hmm. So we needed to put together a toolkit for building custom blockchains. Uh, and that's, that toolkit is what we use for building the Cosmos Hub. And we are seeing adoption from people like Binance Chain, Terra, uh, Lino, of, who are users of the Cosmos SDK to build their own custom blockchains uh, and speak the Cosmos uh, protocols. So that's, that, that's sort of 2017 to 2019. Uh, so what is 2019 going to be about for us? 2019 for us is about taking this protocol that we have, we've prototyped in the past called IBC or Inner Blockchain Communication, uh, which is sort of a, a, a mechanism by which any 2.0 blockchain that speaks a, a, a proof of stake based uh, consensus algorithm with finality, whether it's you know, uh, Tendermint, Casper, uh, there are others, Honey Badger, Grandpa, all of them will be able uh, to take that entire class of blockchain and allow them to exchange data packets with each other. Uh, and those data packets could contain things like tokens, NFTs, programs, etc. Um, so, so that protocol is now what we're, what we're putting together. Very interesting, uh, Zaki. And uh, I think what, what are the challenges you meet to actually connect all these assets between uh, those chains? I mean, so the our, what we suspect is is that the technical work um, is actually fairly low, low risk. Um, a very similar protocol protocols like this have been have been part of the research community of authenticated data packets since the '90s. Um, so mostly what we're doing right now in terms of this like one to two month intense specification phase that we're in is we're just trying to make sure that we incorporate all of the lessons of the past so we don't make any sort of mistakes that we will deeply regret, you know, five years from now. All right, all right. What we're trying, I think what also is a significant technical challenge is connecting the legacy blockchains, uh, Bitcoin, Zcash, Ethereum, et cetera. Uh, to this network. So we have this notion of something called peg zones, which is an entirely different set of technical challenges around how we can create synthetic assets on Cosmos by locking funds on the native chain. All right, all right, all right. And how are things progressing? I mean, th three weeks ago you launched the mainnet and uh, what are actually the, the coming milestones this year? So 
We're about to do the first software upgrade, uh, probably later this week, of the mainnet. Uh, this will so one of the things that we did is we launched the blockchain without uh, transfers being enabled. Uh, so proof of stake worked, governance worked, but we disabled transfers. And one of the reasons we did this is because we were doing this decentralized launch. And because the launch was decentralized, I couldn't make any guarantees or promises about the security of the network as it started up. Uh, now that the network has been stable, um, and most, you know, we're, we're well over 50% of the network is staked, we're very confident in the um, in the stability of the network. And so we can continue to move forward. Uh, you know, we're confident in the stability of the network and, uh, and uh, you know, governance has now decided that it's time to enable transfers. Um, so as part of a software upgrade that will also incorporate bug fixes, et cetera, um, the network essentially goes into this transfers enabled mode. Um, the, the second piece that is, so that's one milestone. Things have been going really well. Um, we're, you know, governance has been incredibly active in just the first three weeks. Uh, the, we, we've already had four governance proposals made. Uh, one failed, one and two have passed. Uh, the third one is being voted on right now. But, but what we are seeing is incredible engagement by our community, um, not just as passive stakers, but now as becoming active participants in protocol development and protocol design. I mean, we've seen these these trends. One of the biggest trends is actually the, the interoperability between these blockchains. I mean, many people are talking about here in, in the conference. What what is for you actually interoperability? What what does it mean? So, our thought process about interoperability is primarily that up until now, what we've seen is a lot of blockchains that basically say, if you want to participate in our economy, you have to like participate in our protocol. So, you know, if you want to issue ERC-20 tokens, you get a, you hold Ether, you uh, uh, frequently raise money in Ether, you issue tokens on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, your tokens live within the Ethereum blockchain, you build applications on top of them, on top of Ethereum. This is a closed worldview. In order to be part of the economy, you must be part of the protocol. What we are trying to do with, with interoperability in Cosmos is allow assets, things of value, data to move between chains so that you end up, so we, have, we, we will inevitably live in a world of many protocols, uh, Ethereum 2.0, Polkadot, Definity, Cosmos, these all, all things will coexist. Um, so, and different people will have different preferences for what systems and what protocols that they, but that shouldn't mean that they are cut off from the economy that is growing around them. So as we expand the blockchain economy, we think it's incredibly important for all of these communities to be able to economically integrate. And that's the focus of Cosmos, is to enable that. All right, all right. And, and, and uh, what are actually the, how do you, see the current market or the current technology development of this space but some say it's it's just 1994 we're just in the early stage of this this industry do you agree on that or is it oh, we're still in a building phase i mean um so here's what i would say we there have been enormous barriers to deploying this technology at scale um, uh, for the last few years. Um, but we are starting to see the fruits of efforts that have been going on for four or five years like ours. Uh, you know, Tendermint has been an extremely long journey to, to bring next generation consensus, proof of stake, uh, uh, more flexible architectures to, the, to market. And the whole reason why I've worked on this for so long is to accelerate the pace of innovation. And what the adoption that we're seeing both on, on DeFi applications like Binance and, and Terra uh, and sort of high volume consumer applications on blockchains is enabled by these, this technology. And we are sort of paving the ground for sort of at least removing at the infrastructure layer a lot of barriers to entry. So now the question is having removed these barriers to entry at the infrastructure layer, will the market barriers to entry also disappear or, or be overcome? Um, and, you know, we, that's a journey that we're all going to be on together. Right, right. 
And uh, of course, Cosmos has has its own uh, utility token. Is is that correct? So there, so there is no token for Cosmos. There is a specific token for a blockchain that started its life uh, about three weeks ago called the Cosmos Hub. This token is called the Atom, um, and that the Atom has not been tradable uh, uh, until this transfers enablement governance process actually finishes. Okay. So that we are expecting to finish this week, um, and and the atoms to become exchangeable. Um, but uh, you know, uh, the software release that to that for this upgrade is done. But the um, but the uh, 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 adoption by the by the validator set and by the community has not yet occurred. So can't predict anything, can't promise anything. But expectations are it will be sh shortly tradable. Can, can I buy uh, Adam uh, the atoms? Not until this trading is enabled. The transfers of it yeah. are enabled. So uh, we are expecting atoms to, to, we're expecting that transfer enablement to then enable a marketplace for atoms. So, so this summer we can expect, yeah. I mean, in the coming months? In the coming week, you, you can expect it. And, and where can you buy it then? Or? I don't, uh, can't really comment on what exchanges are planning to list. Um, I think Poloniex has been fairly pop, uh, 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 public about their intention of listing uh, 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 atoms, but that's all I can say. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, love to talk uh, another time for more questions, but we have to uh, end this conversation yeah. now. But uh, thank you very much for your time, Saki, and uh, yeah, we will be in touch. Great talking to you, thank you.